I'm Megan with Happy Tails Pet Care and I'm a professional pet expert and nutrition consultant. My goal is to educate people about animals and help pet owners provide the best care to their beloved pets. See a pet in my video you like? Let me know and I will feature that pet in more videos. Hey guys, this week I want to talk about mini pigs and this isn't going to be a care video. This is going to be about what it's like to have a mini pig living in your home and what you can expect from a pig. So before you even learn how to take care of a pig, you need to find out if it's gonna be the right pet for you. The first thing that I wanna start off with is talking about what a pig is. And once you can understand a pig, then you can understand where the mini part comes in. There is a huge misconception about what a mini pig actually is. It's not a mini dog, it's not a mini cat, it's a mini pig. So pigs are huge animals and any type of small version of this is not going to be a tiny little pet. It's going to be a fairly good sized pet. It's going to be smaller than the actual regular size, but it's not going to be super, super tiny. So before I even show you a mini pig, I want you to take a look at a regular adult standard size pig. This is Esther, and besides being an awesome celebrity with amazing fashion sense, I'm showing you her photos so that you can see pictures of a standard pig in a house next to people. Pigs are huge animals, and if you had this as a pet, a pet pig in your house, this is what it would look like. So when you see a mini pig, you can't say, what a huge animal. Huge compared to your Pomeranian? Yes. Huge compared to an actual pig? No. Esther, like I said, is awesome and will always make your day better, so go follow her on Facebook right now. You can find her link in the description of this video. And follow her rescue, Happily Ever Esther Farm Sanctuary, where you can see the awesome work that her and her dads do to help animals. Okay, so hopefully you got any ideas of a teacup pig out of your head, and now you can see the real-life expectations of having a mini pig. So this is Petunia. Petunia is a full-grown mini pig. This is what a mini pig is. It is not going to be smaller than this. It might be a tiny bit smaller than this, but generally this is the size that you're going to get or actually much larger when you get a mini pig. Mini pigs are mini pigs. Pigs are gigantic animals and if you're looking for something smaller, this is probably not the right pet for you. Petunia is a Juliana mini pig and they are the smallest breed of pig. She's about three years old and she weighs about 60 pounds. 60 pounds is actually a pretty good size for a well-bred Juliana. But in general, mini pigs should actually not be measured by weight. They should be measured by height. A well-bred Juliana should be between 15 to 17 inches right here at the shoulder where my hand is. Some people accuse mini pig owners of malnourishing their pigs in order to keep them small by giving them very little to eat so that they're underweight. Like any animal, you can tell if it has been malnourished and has been starved. It will be very thin, its bones will be showing, and that's how you tell if they haven't been feeding them right. However, in general, people actually have to keep their pigs on a diet because pigs gain weight very easily. So they actually eat very little. And it's important to not overfeed your pig so that it does stay healthy. Pigs do make really good house pets because they are very clean and can easily be trained to go to the bathroom in a litter box or to go to the bathroom outside like a dog. Many pig owners agree that pigs are actually easier to train than dogs. Petunia here is trained to go to the restroom outside. She spends most of her time inside the house with me, but she is trained to let me know when she needs to go to the bathroom. She is very good about not not going to the bathroom while I'm gone. I can leave her in the house for several hours and she will wait until I get back to go to the bathroom. A lot of people don't realize that pigs actually need vet care. They need vet care the same way that a dog does. They need regular vaccinations and they will also need vet care if something else happens to them like an illness. Before you get a mini pig, it's very important to find a vet in your area that will be able to take care of your pig's medical needs. Another thing that's important to think about is will you have to take your mini pig to the vet or will the vet come out to see your pig? It is easier if you have a veterinarian that is willing to come out to your house to see your pig. Petunia is seen by our veterinarian at home. About a year ago, I noticed that Petunia had very dry skin. Her skin was actually 
flaky and more dry than usual. So I had our veterinarian come out and take a look at her and she actually had what's called sarcoptic mange. This affects about 95% of the pet pig population and is really common for them to get. It is very easy to take care of with a couple of shots and it clears up. But that's an example of how pigs will need vet care throughout their life. Pigs will also need to have their hooves trimmed, their hooves grow continuously, and they also grow tusks. Some pigs need to have their tusks trimmed as well. Petunia has very tiny tusks and she actually never has to have her tusks trimmed, but some pigs do have to have that done. Mini pigs require a special diet. There is packaged food available for mini pigs that is specifically for mini pigs. They cannot eat regular food for pigs, like large pig food. But not every pet store is going to carry mini pig food. So you might have to order it, or you might be able to find it at a local feed store. Pigs can easily get sunburned, especially pink pigs. It's very easy for them to get sunburns. If I take Petunia out during the summer, I put sunscreen on her. So it's really important to protect your pig's skin. And this can be done by providing lots of shade, by providing mud, or putting sunscreen on them. If Petunia is muddy, she gets washed off before she comes into the house. You can see that Petunia actually has very small eyes, and she has pretty big ears and pretty big snout. Pigs have very poor eyesight, but they make up for it with their amazing sense of smell and hearing. Generally, most pigs do not like to be picked up. Petunia tolerated being picked up, and I picked her up up into about 40 pounds, after that, it was a little hard for me to get her, so I don't pick her up anymore. But when she was younger, I did used to do that. Picking up a pig and putting it on your lap is not like picking up a dog. Pigs have hooves, and they do hurt, and they do leave bruises. Pigs are herd animals, and they do need company. However, that doesn't mean that you have to have more than one pig. Pigs can very easily bond to you and other animals. So as long as you have a lot of time to spend with your pig, or you have a dog or other animals that your pig's gonna be with all the time, then they'll be happy. If you don't have any other pets and you're away, you may wanna think about having at least two pigs. Let's see some pictures of Petunia's friends. Pigs are extremely intelligent. They are one of the smartest animals on earth. But having a really intelligent pet is not always a good thing. It actually makes them very difficult to care for, but it makes them very rewarding pets as well. Pigs can be taught to understand several words. Petunia here actually knows quite a few. She knows words like outside, water, go to bed, things like that. Pigs can also be taught to do a lot of tricks. And like I mentioned before, they are not difficult to potty train, but Pigs are so smart that they can train you too. Pigs want to have everything their way. Pigs are like having a toddler, but they're not going to get past the age of four for the next 15 years. They will have tantrums to get what they want. A pig's tantrums includes kicking, screaming, and sometimes biting. I'm very lucky because Petunia has actually never tried to bite me. She won't bite me, but I have heard of a lot of pigs that do bite. And when a pig's having a tantrum, the screaming is really the part that drives you insane. Baby pigs can scream so loud, the way that I like to describe it is, I couldn't hear myself think. Let's take a look at a pig screaming. pigs make a lot of different noises. They oink, they grunt, they make lots of noises with their lips, smacking, sucking, and that's a problem for some people. Some people who don't like certain noises, people who don't like the sound of other people chewing, that's something that's going to bother those people. And pigs will chew and smack their lips even when they aren't eating. They'll do it for really no reason at all and sometimes that gets a little frustrating. Pigs will very quickly learn that they can scream to get what they want, 
and they start training their owners to do whatever they want once they start having a tantrum. And it's very much like having a little kid. If you give in to the tantrums every time and let them do whatever they want, you're gonna raise a bratty pig. Baby pigs do not always sleep through the night. I actually got really lucky with Petunia. She was very good all the time. She would sleep right through the night. She wouldn't make any noises. She wouldn't potty in her crate. So she was really, really good as a baby. But that's not the case for everyone. A lot of baby pigs will cry for attention at night. They will cry because they are hungry. They'll cry because they pottied in their crate. They'll cry just because they want attention and they don't want to sleep. So getting a pig is really like getting a baby. Pigs have a big attitude. Pigs are not like a dog and they're not gonna love you all of the time. Pigs are big talkers, they make a lot of noise, but when Petunia's mad at me, she'll actually give me the silent treatment and she won't even look at me. I was talking to somebody else about when their pig gets mad and what that pig will do is it will knock over everything that it can reach, it'll stomp off to its room, it'll close the door, and just be by itself. Pigs just have such big personalities that sometimes some of the stuff that they do is actually kind of funny. When Petunia was a baby, she slept in a crate at night and she would not go to sleep until the door to her crate was completely closed and locked. So when she was tired, she would go and get in her crate and she would pull it and try to close it by herself, which it's kind of hard to close a crate that way, but she really wanted it to be locked before she went to sleep. And pigs hate change. As she grew, it was really hard to change crates. When I would move her into a bigger crate, she actually hated it because they hate change. So what she would do is she would pee in her crate because she knew that I would not leave her in her crate like that. So several times I had to take her out, clean it up, I'd put her back in, and immediately she would pee again. It was kind of frustrating. I have a raised garden bed where I grow fruits and vegetables, and Petunia figured out very quickly by herself that if she got something like a box, a crate, and kicked it over to the flower bed, she could stand up on top of it and reach the tomatoes to eat them. Pigs are very motivated by food and this can help with training. However, if a pig doesn't want to do something, it's probably not going to do it even if you're offering food. Harness training a pig can be very difficult, but it can be done. I used to use a harness with Petunia. However, I don't anymore because we don't go anywhere and she listens to me really good, so I actually don't have to keep her on a harness in order to keep her with me. She's very good about staying close to me while we're walking around. But this is gonna depend on your situation, whether you're gonna to need to harness train or not. If you're somewhere where you're gonna to have to take your pig out and walk it for it to get exercise, then you're probably gonna need a harness. If you need to take your pig to the veterinarian, then you might need to put it on a harness. Kind of like a dog, mini pigs can also be very destructive in your home. I've been really lucky and Petunia's actually never destroyed anything in my house. However, this isn't the case for everybody. And I asked some of you guys on Facebook if your mini pigs had ever done anything really bad in your house and there's one response that I got that I would like to read to you guys. After the fact, this is a kind of funny story, but when it's happening, it's not funny. But I'm going to read it to you guys so that you can see what a pig could actually do in your house. Of course, this goes for like any pet you get. It can always destroy stuff. But this is a story about a pig destroying something. So this person writes, My pig opened his bedroom door once while we weren't home, made a huge mess in the living room by breaking a decorative bowl of rocks off my coffee table, also ripped his backpack to get to the treats, and ate a whole bottle of baby aspirin. Then he opened my backpack using the zipper and ate all of the erasers off of my Ticonderoga pencils along with a bag of Dove chocolates. He also tore into some of my binders and ripped off a few pages out of my books. When I got home from work, he was back in his room with the door closed like nothing had happened. So there you go. That can happen if you have a mini pig or it could be like mine and not destroy anything in your house or it could do something even worse. Pigs are awesome little animals. And if you have the time to put into them, they make wonderful pets. However, they're not the right pet for everyone. They require a lot of patience, 
but if you're willing to work with your pig and willing to overcome all of the other obstacles such as tantrums, screaming, their huge personalities, they are very rewarding pets to have. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I put out a new video every week talking about different types of pets.